Hi, everybody. Welcome back to The Reason We Learn. I'm Deb Philman, mom, homeschooler, ex-teacher, individualist. I have two apologies to make today. The first is that I'm sitting here with the mic in my face, and you might still be able to hear the lawnmower over my shoulder. This is the time I have to record this video today, so I may have to contend with some sound distortion, and I apologize. The second one is that I have not brought you a voice of reason in at least three weeks, possibly longer, but I have the perfect person today, James David Dixon. This handsome devil maintains the blog Stories About Stories. He writes five stories a week, and you need to subscribe. You really should also follow him on Twitter because he invariably has something very wise to say. I follow him, and I'm amazed at how consistent he is with his wisdom. He's straight to the point, clear, polite, wonderful. So today I want to share with you one of his pieces he reshared today. It's from November of 2020, and it gets to the heart of what I think is missing in everything that we do with children, in our parenting, in our teaching. It's missing from our culture, big time, all the way up to the tippy top of the oldest adult right now is lacking in this quality. But before I do read this to you, I would like to ask you, please, if you would consider subscribing to this channel, if you find this content valuable and interesting, like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and let's get into this. What we get wrong when we talk about privilege. Imagine on the first day of class, a teacher asks everyone to pull out a sheet of paper. She pulls one out too. They'll all be learning today. It's not a pop quiz. It's a brainstorming prompt. What makes you privileged, or fortunate, or lucky, or blessed, or however you prefer to say it? Everyone has something. Maybe they're good at math. Maybe they're inquisitive. Maybe they're well-liked. Or maybe things haven't come easy, and they've been forced to figure things out. Some kids will fill a page in a minute. Some people's lists might be short, but proud. The brevity, the result of a special clarity. Some people might need help understanding that their health, their family, their home, their very existence on this planet is itself a privilege. That every day we wake up with breath in our body, we have an opportunity to build toward the life we want. Most times, when we talk about privilege, we act as if it's a birthright given certain groups and denied others. If we teach people to identify their own privilege and build from it, we empower those people, not by passing down knowledge, but by letting them see and say what is already true. If we teach people that some people are born privileged, white, straight, well-off, well-off people usually, and others are oppressed by it, that empowers the speaker. Salvation can never be achieved, only more speeches and training sessions booked. This is neither a helpful or an interesting way to view the world. Tickling the funny bone of white guilt can be lucrative business, but it doesn't actually help anyone. Kids should be taught to identify and grow whatever privilege they've been given uniquely. This is possible when you view the other 7 billion people as children of God with minds and values and stories of their own. Rather than as, spe rather than as people cursed by their demographic status, given too much privilege or none at all. If life is unfair in ways that hurt you, cannot the world be tilted in ways that help you? This will take time and cunning and a lot of losses, but it can be done, and it doesn't require 7 billion other people to change first. We are all privileged. Why don't we talk about it that way? What a beautiful testimony to the power of gratitude. Simple gratitude. I encourage all parents, all teachers, to consider having your children start a gratitude journal. It can be as simple as a little notepad you buy at the grocery store or even just a piece of paper, like he said. Have them make their own. It could be a craft project. Have them list five things each day. Why five? I don't know. Odd numbers seem to work well. Five things they're grateful for each day. They don't have to be different every day, but it certainly helps if you encourage them to think outside the box. Even the smallest thing the ice cream cone they had today that tasted so good. The fact that it stopped raining and they could go outside and play. That their dog loves to snuggle. That their favorite stuffed animal came out of the wash in one piece. Anything, anything can be something to be grateful for. And when you focus on what you have, when you focus on what you're grateful for, instead of on what you don't have and what pains you, you're just a happier person, okay? 
it's not going to help you get over trauma. It's not going to help you get over a deep depression. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. There are certainly children, teens, adults grappling with very serious issues. And I don't mean to be trite or make this sound like an easy fix. I'm simply saying it's a baseline. If we don't at least start to be grateful, as he said, for just breathing in and out, for being alive, we miss what's beautiful about being alive. What is the point? What is the point? If you're always wanting something more, if you're always bitter that you don't have enough, you'll never be happy. It's never going to be enough. You don't know how to have it be enough. And when bad things happen, as they invariably will, because bad things happen even to good people, sometimes especially to good people, it's harder to cope. What are you going to fall back on? Now, if you're not a person of faith, as James obviously is, I'm personally not, but that's okay. I have you know, respect for people who are, and I think it's wonderful. Whatever you choose, whatever philosophy you have that you live by that helps you move forward in your life, that helps you feel gratitude, that's a good thing. It doesn't have to match mine. And I think this is really what's missing. We live in a world that nurtures grievance. We have schools that nurture grievance. That seems fundamentally wrong to me. And when I say wrong, I mean abusive. I don't think any child should go spend time with adults learning how to nurse grievances, learning how to hold on to hurts, learning how to find hurts where they didn't have them before. Imagine that. He's suggesting you take a piece of paper and write down what makes you privileged, what makes you happy. And, and while these are things that you didn't you know, necessarily make or do, although they can be, you can add that to a gratitude journal. You can put that I did a good job on my homework, that I finished my homework, that I, that I got a good grade, that I played well in my soccer, whatever it is, or that I fell down and got back up, that I'm proud of myself. I'm, I'm grateful for my own courage, for my own patience, for my own good qualities. That's something to work towards as well. But many of these things will be things they didn't necessarily do anything to get like the sun coming up instead of clouds. But it's certainly not the same as saying you're privileged because you have white skin. That's just not a privilege. It's not. So I think it's really, really important to remember that it's not okay for adults to tell your child to be angry, to be sad, and to look for the cloud behind every silver lining. Because I promise you one thing, when you live life that way, you'll find it. You'll find it. You'll find clouds on a sunny day. And what then? What's the point of that? What's the goal of that? That's a question you might want to go ask your teachers, your school boards, people designing the curriculum that your kids are forced to learn. And that's something you might want to ask yourself too. If they're doing this, why would you want your kids to be part of it? Isn't one of the things you're privileged to have those children? Just a thought. So thank you very much, James, for putting these ideas down so clearly and sharing your thoughts with us in this way so we can come back to them and reread them if we need a refresher as I just did. Gratitude. Let's work on it. Okay. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Please go follow his blog. Please follow him on Twitter. And that's it. That's the video.